stating facts, fishing nets are an essential tool for people who do commercial fishing. Whereas when the fishing is off, fishermen will repair the fishing nets that have been used for a long time with holes so they can be used again in the coming year. From ancient times to the present, fishing nets have always been used by the commercial fishermen to catch fish. The rise of fisheries from stick clamps to knives in the early years, people didn't know how to make a network and could only use the most stupid method. At that time, the simplest wooden sticks were used for fishing tools, where several sticks were inserted in the mud to fix them. People drove the fish to the sticks, and as a result, larger fish could not penetrate the gap between the two sticks, and they were caught. The method is called clip fishing. Hey guys, welcome to another exciting video from our channel, How It's Made. In this video today, we take you through the process of how the fishing nets are made. But before jumping into the video, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to our channel and also hit the bell icon to get a notification whenever we upload a new video. That said, let's begin. History of Fishing Net To be precise, the oldest net discovered dates back to 8300 BC, where it was then made of willow trees and was found in other fishing equipment in the Corellia town of Antria, while another fishing net with a sinker was found on the dry bottom of the sea, which dates back to the late Mesolithic period. However, the rock carvings in Alta in northern Norway date from 4200 to 500 BC and represent animal, human, and religious paintings. Among these carvings, some people think that they represent the horizontal and vertical line patterns of the fishing net. The ancient Egyptians knew fishing nets, and we learned this from tomb paintings dating from 3000 BC. Hence, with that being said, let us take a look at the oldest forms of fishing nets. Ancient Fishing Rod However, the efficiency of clip stick fishing is too low, and people have worked hard to get as much fish as possible. In the shallows where the water is not deep, the fishermen used to circle the shallows with wooden sticks and circle the fish in it. Fishing gear development, the emergence of netting has its own consideration. Earlier, people used woven reed poles into straw mats with ropes and then later used them to circle fish for fishing. As a result, this kind of fishing straw mat is very similar to the current summer mat. It has very small gaps and will not allow shrimps and crabs to run away along with the gaps. When big fish are caught, small shrimps and crabs also appear on the table. Ancient Fishing Reed Until people knew how to make baskets with rattan and knew that straw could be used to make ropes, basket nets and straw rope nets appeared one after another. Everything can only be relied on in the era of handwork. Without the help of tools, the knots of the straw rope net are all made by people at a glance and the finished product is always very rough and simple. Hook-type fishing net basket The emergence of cotton has enabled people to understand weaving, and at the same time brought the upgrading of fishing nets. In the Museum of Fishing Island Memory, a seaweed house was restored, and a tool for weaving cotton thread nets was placed on the bed in the house. However, fishing nets made of natural materials, no matter the strength of the material or the durability of the sun, cannot compare with modern chemical nylon fiber materials. They're very prone to dampness and rot. After entering the sea, the fishing nets are often soaked in seawater. The rope between the nets is more likely to be corroded and embrittled by the external force of the fish in the waves. If the maintenance is improper, the breakage and damage are normalized. Therefore, during the rest period, the drying and maintenance of the fishing nets are carried out. Changes in materials or refinement of the functions of fishing nets. After the emergence of nylon material, it gradually replaced the old fishing nets. Now fishermen use this kind of fishing nets made of chemical fibers. Both the resistance and corrosion resistance are far better than the original cotton and linen fiber nets of the past. There are no shortcomings of old fishing nets, only regular inspections and repairs, no need for frequent maintenance and drying as in the past. It also greatly reduces the intensity of the work of the fishermen. Today, the shape of fishing nets has not changed much, but the materials used for them have changed. Today's nets are made of synthetic materials, which makes them stronger, lighter, and cheaper. With that being said, let's take a look at modern times fishing nets. Making of modern times fishing nets. A cast net is a relatively small round net from 1.5 to 4 meters with heavy objects on the edges thrown from the hand and used to catch small fish when the net is pulled back. Speaking of its making, the cast net is made of linen. Flax was subsequently replaced by cotton and it was not replaced by synthetic fibers, mainly nylon mesh and nylon of polyolefine ropes. Until around 1950, cast nets are now made of monofilament nets or multi-wire nets. While a gill net is a vertical net with heavy objects at the bottom and floats at the top, when it tries to cross the net, it'll catch the fish. The lifting net is placed horizontally in the water with the opening facing upward. If it's smaller, it lifts it by hand. 
if it's larger, lifts it mechanically. Kill nets are mesh balls suspended in water columns, usually made of monofilament or multifilament nylon. The mesh size is designed to allow the fish to only let the head pass through the net and not let the body pass through the net. When the fish tries to exit the net, the gills of the fish will be caught by the net. Sea nets are one of the most common nets. It was first used to surround a large number of fish and then pull a line to close the bottom of the net and then drag the entire net into the boat. The fence consists of a mesh panel stitched into a rectangle. The top and bottom are ropes that extend along the length of the net. The panels are tied to these ropes with thicker ropes. Continuous contact between the bottom of the net and the lake bed is important, so counterweights are needed to keep the floating net down. There is two options, lead rope or barrel lead. The weight of the barrel is 30 to 100 grams. In weight, there is a lead wire under each cork or float for the entire length of the entire net. The choice of cork and lead depends entirely on the user and site conditions. The choice of mesh is extremely important. All nets nowadays are knotless because this type of net is more friendly to vulnerable fish. Certain factors need to be considered when deciding on the mesh size of the fence. The first is the size of the target species and potential fish. Nets with two large meshes will eventually act as gill nets, which is an unwanted and ugly result. Although most gill net fish can survive if they are carefully removed, this takes time and will definitely reduce the efficiency of network operations. On the contrary, if the mesh size is too small, the mesh will collect a large amount of sludge, causing problems during retrieval. In addition, a large area net with small meshes can act as a solid wall, making it difficult to penetrate the water surface. Usually, the main network segment uses 9 to 12 millimeter meshes with a few 5 to 6.5 millimeter meshes in the middle. This is a landing area when the net is fully retracted. On very large nets, the mesh size of the wing part can reach 22 millimeters. Entangled netting is a variant of gill net, but the mesh size is smaller. The fish caught by this net is not trapped by gills, but trapped by teeth and fins. They're designed to catch fish with their nose or jaw, so that the bycatch can be resuscitated and released unharmed. These nets are made of very thin, lightweight nylon ropes with very small meshes and are strung between two ropes, a top rope with floats and a bottom rope with heavy objects. Trammel is another variant of gill net. It has three layers, a thinner grid sandwich between two larger grids. It's also placed vertically and used to catch fish or crustaceans. Gill nets are not thornfish, but they catch fish after they swim through a large net and then wrap themselves in a smaller net, thereby reducing the mortality of caught fish compared with ordinary gill nets. Push nets are smaller nets with a large belly placed in a rigid frame. It pushes along the bottom in shallow water to catch shrimp and small fish to live on the bottom. Push net fishing can be carried out during the day or night from the shore or from an engine driven boat. When the boat reaches the fishing ground, tie the net to the pole and the ground rope and head rope are in place, setting the gear in the water and making floating adjustments until the lower part touches the bottom. At the end of the fishing operation, the bag is towed by a rope attached to the bag, emptied and lured for the next round of fishing. And that's it, guys. Let's know if you found this video informative in the comment section below. Also, if you like this video, Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. See you in the next video.